Hey everybody. So we are here in inland Southern California. This is zone 9B and it's late February. And today we're going to be talking about fertilizing fruit trees. And specifically, I'm going to give you a couple of examples on citrus trees. So what you've just seen is a picture of my grapefruit tree. And we'll also go over to my Valencia orange tree a little bit later. So I'm going to give you advice that is specific to California, but I'm going to try to also mention where things might be different in other parts of the world. So we have a warm and dry Mediterranean climate and spring really starts to spring, so to speak, here in about February. And so February is a great time for us to start fertilizing our fruit trees because it is the start of the growing season. So one thing to consider is you don't always need to fertilize your fruit trees. You really do need to think about the performance of your fruit tree. So one thing to think about is that plant performance is your best indicator of what's going on. So this fruit tree actually looks pretty great uh, and I haven't fertilized it in a couple of years, but what I have noticed is that up near the top, the leaves are starting to get kind of yellowish and a lighter green and so this is this could be actually due to weather we are coming out of winter here but it also could be due to some nitrogen deficiency because this is the newest growth on the tree and so this year i actually am going to fertilize but how do you decide whether you want to fertilize as i said plant growth and, and condition is a good indicator. The other thing that's great is to get a soil test because you're not always going to actually have deficiencies in your region. So for my region, you typically don't see deficiencies in nutrients such as potassium, phosphorus, boron, things like that. But you can see deficiencies occasionally in iron and zinc. And typically the main nutrient that most plants need is nitrogen. And so I typically, because I know that my soil mainly just needs nitrogen, is I tend to focus on using fertilizers that are heavier or uh, more abundant in that element. So how do I know? How do I know that there's more nitrogen in a fertilizer? So on any bag of fertilizer, you'll see three numbers and those correspond with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, or for short, N, P, and K. And I've chosen a, a fertilizer that's a bit higher in nitrogen. So that first number is a bit higher. So the fertilizer I chose is a 612, so 6% 6 nitrogen, 1% phosphorus, and 2% potassium. And that's just because I know I need a little bit more, more fertilizer or more nitrogen. The other thing to think about is you don't necessarily have to fertilize every year. You don't necessarily have to fertilize multiple times a year. In California, the typical recommendation for fruit trees is that you fertilize three times. So a Valentine's Day, um, Memorial Day, and then Labor Day. And maybe you need that. Maybe you do a soil test and your soil is deficient in some of these nutrients. Maybe your trees don't look great. And so maybe that indicates you do need to fertilize that regularly. But for me, honestly, I have really good soil. I've spent a long time building it up. So I typically fertilize my trees once a year, if that, and I usually do it now as they're starting to get ready to put their new growth on. There are some other considerations when you're thinking about fertilizer. So there are different types. One of the broad types is synthetic or chemical fertilizers versus organic fertilizers. And by synthetic or chemical, I mean something that's created from chemicals in an industrial process. So most commonly that would be something like those familiar blue crystals or miracle Grow. that's a synthetic fertilizer. Organic fertilizers, by organic right now, I mean fertilizers made from natural substances. So that could be from manure, bone meal, feather meal, things like that. Um, in my case today, I'm using a plant-based natural fertilizer, organic fertilizer. I'm using neem, which is a uh, neem kernel, which is a byproduct of the neem oil industry. You could use alfalfa meal, soy meal. So these are just, these are natural things. Um, 
There's also certified organic. So the, the fertilizer I'm using today has been certified organic as well, kind of like organic produce at your grocery store. And you'll see often a label that says OMRI or OMRI, and that means it's certified organic. In California, you can also see CDFA, and that's certified organic by the California Department of Food and Agriculture. So really, both all these types of fertilizers work. Honestly, it's just my choice to go with organic fertilizers. There are also different forms of fertilizer that you can use. So there are liquid fertilizers. This could be something like fish emulsion that you mix with water and you pour on your plant or your tree. It could be a synthetic or chemical um, liquid concentrate that you add to water. You can even inject those into your drip system to feed your trees. And then there are also granular fertilizers, those are more like powders. Um, the organic ones typically take longer to break down than the synthetic ones, which I like because it feeds the plants for a longer period of time. But you can find slow release synthetic fertilizers if that's what you're interested in. And then for fruit trees, you'll often see fertilizer spikes and you can get organic ones or not either way and you pound the spikes into the ground around the tree and it feeds the tree over time so those are some of the more common forms what i'm using today is kind of a powder more of a granular fertilizer it actually looks and smells kind of like cocoa powder which is kind of nice um so then the question is how do you apply this type of fertilizer the granular now the ideal is to apply it around the tree at what we call the drip line. So what is the drip line? If you think about the canopy of the tree all the way around and you think about a rainstorm and the rain falling on the tree, think about where the water is going to drip off onto the ground. And it's usually kind of at the outer edge of the, the canopy. And so that is the drip line. And what you can see under the tree is I have mulch all around the tree to improve the quality of the soil and to retain moisture. And what I've already done is I've taken a rake and I've moved the mulch back around the tree in the drip line. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not an exact science, but this is the ideal. There are situations where you can't fertilize under the drip line. And I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of an example of that later. But for the current tree, I was able to rake the mulch back all the way around so that when I put the fertilizer down, it's going to have contact with the soil. And then you sprinkle the fertilizer around and you scratch it into the surface a little bit, and I'll do that in a second, and then you water it in well. And I've actually already uh, applied fertilizer most of the way around the tree because I didn't want you to have to watch me do all of that. So I'm just going to apply the rest of the fertilizer to the front here. So I already have my little cup of fertilizer here. And I'm following package instructions, by the way, in terms of the amount of fertilizer to apply. So for this one, it's two cups for a mature tree. And this, is, this tree is mature. It's been in the ground for quite some time. So I'm just going to sprinkle it as evenly as I can. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then once I've done that, you can rake it in, scratch it in. Um, a rake might be easier, but I'm going to use my trusty little tool here. And it, the idea is just to scratch it in to maybe the first inch or so. Keep emphasizing it doesn't have to be perfect. And the idea is to just incorporate it into the soil a little bit. And I and I'll later I'll go around and I'll do the rest of the tree. And then I've got my trusty hose here. And you just water it in. Now, a lot of times people will have kind of a basin that they've made out of earth around their tree. And you could just, you know, fill that basin, let it soak in, do that a couple of times. What I'm going to do is just water it till you start to see runoff and just kind of go back and forth. Again, 
And this is another thing that doesn't have to be perfect. The other thing is we're expecting rain um, for quite a few days later this week. So I don't feel like I have to water it quite as much because the rain is going to help dissolve the fertilizer and move it into the root zone. So I will finish the rest of this tree later. And then what I'll do is rake the mulch back into place when I'm done. But for now, I want to take you to another tree and show you an example of a couple of other things to think about. So I also want to talk about this Valencia orange and use it as an example of a couple of other things that you might want to think about. And what it is is that when you're fertilizing your trees, it's a great time to work on some other things. So it's a great time to check your overall tree health. It's also a great time to do some pruning if it's also the right time to prune in your region. And here we can prune citrus pretty much any time of year, but right now is a, is a particularly good time. So you can do some pruning, some cleanup of the tree. And then the other thing you can do is check on the irrigation. So we'll come over here and you'll see that I've raked back the mulch here around this tree and you could see the exposed drip line. And what I noticed when I was working on fertilizing this tree and I was checking the drip line is that this drip line was actually buried under dirt because I hadn't checked in a couple years. And so I pulled it up and then I ran it just to see if there were any clogs or any problems. And in fact, one of the emitters was clogged. So this was a great time to fix that, to flush the system and then put it back in place. And so that's a, this is just a really great time to do that. The other thing that I'd like to point out is when we were looking at the grapefruit tree, I mentioned that it's ideal to fertilize around the drip line, but sometimes it's not always possible. And what you could see from the first shot of this tree is it's a really large tree. And the drip line is actually over the lawn. And honestly, it's not a great idea to plant trees in the middle of the lawn. It's not recommended, but this is where the original owners of the house placed it. And so I can't actually put fertilizer around the true drip line here. If I did, it would mainly fertilize the lawn. Not much of it would get to the tree. And so I've done what I can. And in this area inside the little um, circle here, I put the fertilizer around the outer edge. And it's usually okay as long as you're at least about two feet away from the trunk of the tree. And this tree always does fine. And as I mentioned earlier, your best indicator is plant performance and this tree is, is doing well. So I will go back later and I will pull the mulch over here. This has already been fertilized and watered. So I hope you've enjoyed today's talk. I hope you've learned a little bit about fertilizing. Please leave your questions and your comments below and hopefully I can be able to answer them. Thanks very much.